there are several things um, and different ideas um, included in my homily today. Um, sometimes from the time that I decide, usually a month or so in advance, um, what to talk about, um, from that time until the time that the writing actually starts, lots of different thoughts and lots of different life events happen, so I'm never sure where I'm going to end up. But I wanted to start with just a piece of history. Um, 500 years ago, Martin Luther changed the history of the world by nailing the 95 Theses to the door of Wittenberg Chapel. We know he was in protest not only of the theology of the Catholic Church, but the structure of the Church itself, and thus the Protestant Reformation began. Yet there were others protesting. These were the radical reformers who pushed even more radical and extreme reform of not only the Protestant Church, but of the Catholic Church. And among these radical reformers were Michael Servetus, one of our Unitarian martyrs, who wrote and later published his treatise, Heirs of the Trinity. 36 years after Martin Luther started the Reformation, Servetus was convicted as a heretic and burned at the stake in Geneva at the request of John Calvin, one of the other Protestant reformers. Then a few decades later in Hungary, another Unitarian martyr, Francis David, preached the Edict of Torda. Actually, I've been to Torda in Romania, that, that section of Unitarianism, which used to be Hungary, is now Romania. Um, and um, I went to Torda, and I have a little rock <laughs> that I picked up at Torda. Um, David was the founder of Unitarianism in Hungary, which is now part of Romania. The Edict of Torda, in part, said, it is not permitted that anyone should threaten anyone else by imprisonment or by removal from his post for his teaching. For faith is a gift of God and comes from hearing, which hearings is by the word of God. This edict landed David in prison, where he died before he was burned at the stake. Such, such threats caused stagnation of Unitarian theology for about 200 years before it resurfaced in England. The early Unitarians um, were called anti-Trinitarians, um, and they believed that Jesus was the best prophet, but that Jesus was not God. So in our Unitarian culture and history, Unitarians are called Christian, not just believing that Jesus was God. So you see in this very short walk through history that resistance of theocracy and forced doctrinal teachings is part of our Unitarian DNA. Resistance, I believe, is a spiritual act. And I can hear you silently thinking, well, what's a spiritual act? And what's spiritual? And I can only tell you what I believe spirituality is for me. I believe that spirituality is something that demands me, as our first reading said, it demands me to live out of goodness, and it requires me to be thoughtful. Spirituality requires creativity, and for me, leading a spiritual life leads to wholeness. My spiritual life has changed drastically in the past few years, primarily due to the influence of Al-Anon. This is because I've learned and truly believe that my behavior can be an influence. I've learned that I cannot change others. I can only work to change and improve myself, and thus my response might be the influence. Thus my favorite prayer is the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Spirituality then for me is both an inner and an outer awareness. For me, 
It's a way towards that wisdom, and it's a way of analysis for about how to be a creative force that promotes freedom and justice. And it's a way of being fully alive and conscious of what's happening, yet it is a way of approaching life in order to live in the imbalance of destructiveness without hate and without succumbing to the destructiveness of hate. Spirituality, for me, is also a process. It's a day-to-day, and sometimes even an hour-to-hour, being aware of what's going on in the world while at the same time engaging an active, creative response which promotes that wholeness and peace. This is what I have learned and what I continue to practice, and the operative word here is practice that everyday practice. I can't change the personality and behaviors of others. I cannot expect someone else to change just because I want them to change. And I can only change myself and my response to what is. That DNA of resistance is deep within me, and I've learned to foster that resistance as a spiritual act when I say that serenity prayer. And yes, I pray. I pray in silence and I pray with dirty hands. I pray in silence and I pray alone. It's not just navel gazing, but it has to do with this deep conversation with God of the universe and then to listen what the universe is telling me. I've also learned my conversations is about asking the right questions and then listening for the answer. And I have learned over time to ask the right questions. And my questions have changed from how or why did this terrible thing happen or how could people be so stupid to what can I do and how can I be the source of creativity. Praying for me is that pathway to the wisdom of know what I can change and what I can't. And it helps me understand um, the process and the ongoing attention that it requires. Praying helps me understand and engage in a wisdom to know the difference, again, of what I can change and what I cannot. It's also a way of tuning out. It's a way of tuning out the perpetual news of negativity. It doesn't mean that I'm not informed. Rather, it's a way of tuning my brain to look for the good into the prayer and to share the good acts. But I also pray with dirty hands. And praying with dirty hands is what I call active engagement for peace and justice. Praying with dirty hands is a public act. Resistance as a spiritual act requires that I be prophetic in public. Henry Nouwen is a Catholic theologian and priest. And he said, I am increasingly convinced that we, we will fully grasp the meaning of peacemaking only when we recognize not only is prayer a form of resistance, but that resistance is also a form of prayer. Being prophetic means I listen to what the God of the universe wants me to do and then do it in public. It means speaking the truth with love, calling out the injustices of the empire, and calling each other to work for peace. But here's the hard part. There's always a hard part. (laughs) Resistance as a spiritual act, for me, means resisting the urge to bow to the level of the folks who promote hate and injustice. It means resisting the urge to hate them back. It means giving up my desire for vengeance, for putting up my dukes. Resistance, for me, means giving up my preoccupation for trying to change someone else. It's a spiritual act, means resisting the urge to demonize the other person. And it means not stooping to the level of meanness or impolite behavior or dialogue by calling names. Resistance as a spiritual act means stepping out with a good foot. 
Yes, resistance is a spiritual act, is stepping out with a good foot and behaving with compassion. And it's not easy. Is it an easy thing? No. Is it necessary? Yes. I have been serving on the committee which has worked to make Lexington a city of compassion and sign on to the Charter of Compassion started by Karen Armstrong. And Karen Armstrong has been an international force behind the movement that compassion is universally needed in our fractured times. And she says this, we urgently need to make compassion a clear, luminous, and dynamic force in our polarized world, rooted in a principal determination to transcend selfishness. Compassion can break down political, dogmatic, ideological, and religious boundaries. Born of our deep interdependence, compassion is essential to human relationships and to a fulfilled humanity. It is the path to enlightenment and is indispensable to the creation of a just economy and a peaceful global community. That's a mouthful. I think the short version of Karen's quote is that compassion and kindness are creative forces that can result in the beloved community in which we wish to live. I believe that kindness and compassion are acts of resistance. I, it is hard to believe that compassion works. It's especially hard to think that tiny changes in my behavior, tiny acts of kindness, such as the drivers in the accident, can be spiritual acts of resistance. It's especially hard to believe it when hate is so visible and when the power of hate seems to be so much stronger than the power of love. As I was writing this sermon, thinking about the charter of compassion and about tiny acts of kindness, Jesus' parable of the mustard seed came to mind. Remember, Jesus lived in an incredibly destructive power of the theocracy of the Roman Empire. There was an immense amount of oppression. Sound familiar? Jesus' lessons during this oppression were clear. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, love one another as you love yourself. And during this time of great oppression, Jesus taught not to fight, but to act with compassion. And when his disciples were discouraged, they asked Jesus how to give them, to give them more faith. And Jesus presented them with the parable of the mustard seed. And he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed in which man took and sowed in his field, and this is, and this is smaller than all the other seeds. But when it blooms full grown, it is larger than the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nests in its branches. Well, we can take this parable, and parables are not meant to be taken literally. If we want to create the kingdom of heaven or the beloved community, we can plant a mustard seed. Yes, small acts of faith can create the kingdom of heaven and the beloved community. Just think for a second. The key concept, I think, in this parable is the mustard seed. The mustard seed is incredibly tiny very, very tiny, but mustard is an invasive species and it will take over your garden. The mustard seed may be understand of a metaphor for doing what Jesus asked us to do. Those tiny acts, love one another like you love yourself, clothe the naked, feed the hungry, work for justice. No act is too small, even acts as tiny as the mustard seed can make a difference because it can be invasive. Jesus was saying, resist the empire with your compassion. Even tiny acts can be invasive and make changes beyond your imagination. So yes, I believe resistance is a spiritual act, and that act begins with me. 
It's an act that makes me resist my own tendencies to wish to change the others rather than the resist the tendencies within myself to act in ways that are destructive. Finally, I believe a spirituality of resistance requires that I hold on to hope with both hands. It requires that I hold on to my faith and believe deep down that creating the beloved community is possible. And such creation begins with me, even with tiny acts of kindness. Indeed, we live in difficult times, but we can't give up. We can live up and into that faith of our ancestors like Servetus and David, who taught us the importance of resistance and who died for it. And with our continual acts of spirituality of resistance, we need not wait another 200 years for such faith to manifest itself. Amen. I ask you to join me in the prayer that's in your insert. <clears throat> Spirit of justice, break open our hearts, break them wide open. Let our anger pour through like strong storms, cleansing us of complacency. Let courage pour through like spring storms, flooding with fear. Let zeal pour through like brazing summer sun, filling us with passion. Force of justice, grant me anger at what is, courage to do what must be done, passion to break down the walls of injustice, and build a land flowing with milk and honey for God's beloved, for God's special love, God's poor one, spirit of justice, Break open our hearts. <clears throat>